Bryce Kuhn here alongside Dylan Sanders, LSU, a last, nearly a last second field goal. 34-31 winners against the Arkansas Razorbacks. The boot stays home. Dylan, this one, it wasn't necessarily really pretty at times. It wasn't the uh, the, the sexiest showing for the LSU In the first Tigers. half. You can say it was the, the first half. In the first half. But the offense, let's start right here. Six straight scoring drives bookended with field goals, five, uh, four touchdowns in between. Just talk about what this team was able to do and kind of capitalize when they needed to. I mean, you know, we're standing in the end zone here. Uh, it kind of smells like bar- like burnt bacon uh, because, you know, Brian Thomas uh, Jr., Malik Neighbors, they both had triple-digit receiving yards, mm-hmm. and they're kind of making their case for one of the best duos in the, yeah. the country. We kind of wanted to see that coming into the season. Like, we wanted Brian Thomas to take that step. Everyone knew Malik Neighbors was good. Brian Thomas always had those flashes. This m- might have been his best game as an LSU Tiger, coming at a good time, 34-31 win. Uh, and, and, you know, at going into half, we were like, man, Jaden, yeah. not not the best performance. You can't – I think you literally said this on the board. You can't win the SEC West playing like – they did in the, they first, did in the half. first half. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Missed throws. Um, you know, he had a couple plays where they, they were okay, but comes out in the second half, he's making his progressions. He's hitting guys in stride. He's leading them with his passes. And it was like a whole new offense in the second half. And that was what we wanted to see. And I think the big thing that led to that was the running game getting started. They had 29 yeah. rushing yards outside of that, that Josh Williams long run mm-hmm. uh, in, in the first half. And you come out and they do what we've been saying they need to do and have uh, Logan Diggs and Caleb Jackson as the one to punch. And it looks like an SEC backfield. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned, obviously, that tandem. Brian Kelly said earlier this week that Caleb Jackson, physically gifted wise, is there. Like, he's a yeah. guy that can start in the SEC. It's more of just learning, you know, where to block and that kind of stuff That because he just hasn't played a lot of football. Mm-hmm. Uh, you mentioned, obviously, Logan Diggs, 14 carries, I believe 97 yards. We really saw him emerge as that lead back. And I asked Kelly the question and wanted to get your thoughts because we're talking about that running game. They really leaned on Diggs, and it's something this team didn't have really last year, but a guy that can go get them those tough yards mm-hmm. that they can be able to do and they can be able to say, look, hey, we we got to get you know seven yards to set up a field goal. This is this is what we're going to do. This is what we got to do, and that's, look, exactly what they did with Logan Diggs. Well, you're talking about them not having it last year. They didn't have it in week one. Yeah. It came yeah. back in the Grambling game, and immediately you're like, well, this guy runs different. You know, Josh Williams, you know, great story, great runner, but – you know, he'd get stopped for he w- it. Wouldn't it wasn't consistent that you get those those yards you need? John Emery, we've all been waiting for it to break out, and you know, some some rough start towards the season getting started, and Logan Diggs come comes in and looks like that SEC back that you really yeah. want. Yeah, no, I, I mean, and there was a crucial missing him. I you know what we we everyone made a big deal about it. Not having Logan Diggs seems to have made a bigger impact than not having Mason Smith in that first game. Yeah, I mean, you start to kind of look at what the pieces are starting to work together. And look, this offense is far from a finished product. Against better competition, they're going to have to play a full 60. We're not disputing that. We're also not disputing the fact that Jane Daniels has got to play a full 60. We saw it against Mississippi State. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got to play against an Arkansas team this this tonight that really challenged them physically, uh, challenged the offensive line, was physical with the wideouts. That being said, Defensively, Brian Kelly said this. There's still a lot to work on. There oh, definitely yeah. is. Oh, yeah. I will say I like the renewed sense of maybe confidence. Maybe it was a come to Jesus meeting uh, with Frank Wilson. We've seen a couple of those on social media. Whatever it was to come out in that second half and be able to just kind of just stop when you needed it. Now, look, I say stop when you needed it. LSU scored the final six drives. Arkansas, Arkansas scored the last five. Uh, six drives and then last five for Arkansas. So, Defensively, are there some concerns that they need to fix going into Ole Miss next weekend? And what would, what would you evaluate the performance here tonight? Uh, well, I, you know, they're playing with a lot of intensity. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they've talked about the passion they're playing with for, for Greg Books. And I think that's visible on the, a visible difference. The, 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 the athleticism, like the, the aggression that they're bringing to defense mm-hmm. from the start of the year to now. Yeah. I think that's a big difference. But the problem is uh, broken plays. Yes. And we saw a lot of those. And that was really where – uh, it was chunk plays that got Arkansas in it. Uh, yeah. They had, like, two false starts. They the burned 50, their time. The 59-yard yeah. t- touchdown pass. It, it, was the, it was the two false starts. The, uh, they burned two timeouts right at the beginning of the third quarter. You look like, you feel like LSU's defense is in a good spot. Then, you know, 59 yards to the freshman tight end. Which, shout-out to him. He's a baller. We saw him play. Yeah. Very good players on Arkansas. I mean, this is an SEC West matchup. But you can't have, you know, 59 yards on the outside Blown to a freshman coverages. tight end. 
blown coverage. The linebackers, uh, you know, they're looking good. And I, I like this duo of Greg Penn and Whit Weeks a lot. And, you know, you throw in Omar Spates. And I think that's a really solid linebacker uh, you do, but they've got to be better in coverage. And yeah. I think that as, as much as as much heat as the secondary is getting, the linebackers need to step up in coverage a lot. And I think that's something that, you know, needs to be put on the forefront. Brian Kelly mentioned this in his postgame presser saying, look, uh, at certain positions we kind of know who we are and we've got to be better. That leads me to kind of think that he is well aware. Obviously, he's a great coach. He understands mm -hmm. he's done this for 30-plus win, years. Most win, winning is in FBS. I mean, he, he's, he's got a couple notches in his belt. That being said, he understands the deficiencies, but you'd much rather have these deficiencies yeah. and you win a close ball game. Yeah. Now, Dylan, we kind of look ahead, and we're going to do this, obviously, tomorrow night on Sunday night's podcast and, and everything looking into the week. The SEC West is kind of wide open. Mm -hmm. The importance of this win here tonight was huge to kind of put that first foot forward in home SEC play. Now you're two and zero in conference, heading to what could be a tough road environment. I mean, back to back road environment, road environments in the yeah. SEC, and it's really hard to win in the SEC back to back weeks on the road. So, I mean, we're gonna if you, if you're still unconvinced about what this team is, you're gonna know. Yeah. After the Mizzou game. Yeah, I think you're uh, going to have a big idea of what this team yeah. is and what they're trying to head to way before Alabama. Like, yeah. and, and maybe even way before October 14th. They were showing it here, which seems like a long time. But obviously, like Dylan said, they go on the road to Ole Miss, who fell to Alabama. And then on the road to Missouri, which who could very well be undefeated. We'll see. They could be undefeated. But it'll be very interesting to watch as well. Dylan Sanders, my name is Bryce Kuhn. This is the Instant Reaction Podcast, just kind of talking right here at Tiger Stadium. Now, a couple of news notes for you going forward. Make sure you subscribe over to Go 24-7. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Set up those notification bells so you know when we go live. Speaking of that, 6 p.m. Central. We're going to be live on Sunday night talking about this game. Uh, I'll probably rewatch the game. I'm sure you'll look at some of the highlights, and we'll look at that, and we'll kind of talk about what this team needs to do going forward. Got a couple of rowdy LSU fans having a good night uh, here behind us. A couple of woo pig sueys in a loss right here behind you know, us as honestly, well. I respect the I respect hitting the suey after a loss. I, I like it. Hitting the suey. Speaking of that, Damian Ramos. A little Ronaldo. Oh, a little Ronaldo celebration. Like little Ronaldo I like celebration. It. I like it. And, and just kind of to do, talk about that. Special teams has been a concern, obviously. But I think it was huge for Ramos to come in and hit that field goal as well. 34-31. LSU knocks off. The Arkansas Razorbacks rivalry game kept the boot home. It's a big one. We'll catch you next time here on the Go 24-7 YouTube channel. Dylan Sanders, my name is Bryce Kuhn. See you next time.